The Latin American markets have been growing steadily over the last few decades, and they're on track to become major world economies. Places like Colombia and Brazil are pouring a ton of cash into building up their infrastructure. So today, I'll be taking a look at the 15 largest mega projects in South America. Number 15. Tucurui, Brazil The Tucurui Dam in Brazil has the distinct honor of being the first large-scale hydroelectric project to be built in the Amazon forest. Congrats, but it was definitely a long road because the construction began in 1975 and wasn't officially complete until 2012. Forty years in the making may have been worth it because the Tucurui Dam generates 8.5 gigawatts of power for 13 million people. Today, it's the country's biggest hydroelectric plant that's owned and operated completely by Brazil instead of a private corporation. The Tucurui Hydro Power Complex is situated on the lower Tocantins River in Tucurui Para, Brazil, and took two phases to build. It's been producing energy since 1984. The entire project cost over $5 billion to build, which included the 245-foot-tall and 41,000-foot-long concrete gravity dam. The second phase of construction added 11 generating units, which allowed the dam's capacity to almost double. The dam became so popular in the 1970s that it was even featured as the backdrop of a Hollywood film. Number 14. Belomonte, Brazil Staying in the beautiful and tropical country of Brazil, we have the Belomonte Dam, a hydroelectric power project on the lower part of the Xingu River, also in Para. The dam's installation was completed in September of 2019 and has a 9.4 gigawatt generating capacity. It was planned to continue construction in 2020 and add another 11 gigawatt capacity, which would make it the fourth largest hydroelectric power plant. But this dam is owned and operated by Norte Energia, which is led by the Brazilian electric utility company Electrobase. In all, the project cost around $11 billion and began in 2011. This project consists of two dams and two powerhouses, including the main powerhouses equipped with 18 Francis turbines and a supplemental powerhouse with six more. However, the construction of the Belo Monte brought about some unfortunate issues. The large dam, while diverting the flow of the Xingu River, also devastated an extensive area of the Brazilian rainforest, displaced over 2,000 people, and threatened the survival of the indigenous populations, as well as the flora and fauna there. Number 13. Guri, Venezuela Also known as the Simon Bolivar Hydroelectric Power Station, the Guri Dam in Venezuela has a power capacity of 10 gigawatts and sits 62 miles upstream in the Caroni River. It became one of the biggest power plants in the world and provides approximately 50,000 gigawatts of energy to the country each year. The Guri Dam measures 531 feet in height and over 4,200 meters in length, and it's privately owned by the CVG Electrification del Caroni. The Guri Dam was commissioned after the government adopted a policy in the 1960s to reduce the amount of energy produced from fossil fuels, and construction began in 1963, after a total of six companies were awarded the contract. It was truly a joint effort. By 1964, the Caroni River was diverted to enable construction, but it wasn't until 1976 that the civil works of the first stage were completed, so needless to say, it was quite the bureaucratic process. However, by 2010, Venezuela became overdependent on the Guri Dam when water levels fell drastically, which led to a severe power crisis in the country. Water levels fell again, though, in 2016, and a serious major blackout ensued. Number 12. Itaipu, Brazil and Paraguay Beginning construction in 1971 and ending in 1984 on the border of Brazil and Paraguay is the Itaipu Dam. With an installed generation capacity of 14 gigawatts, it's the second largest operational hydroelectric power plant in the world. Because of the dam's location, it can meet the energy demands of the two countries, but 90% of the energy generated by the dam is used by Brazil. The ambitious project was split into two units, with both being finished the same year, to the tune of $19.5 billion. Today, the dam's hydroelectric outlet is equal to the energy consumed by Paraguay for 11 years and by Argentina for just one. The completion was momentous for the history of the two countries since their relations have been hot and cold over the years, because at the end of the day, everybody needs affordable clean energy. Number 11. Bogota Metro 
Sometimes a major city is only as good as its metro line. You can almost feel the pulse of places like New York City, London, and Tokyo with their metro or subway lines acting like the veins and the trains themselves pumping through them like blood making its way into the heart. Well, Bogota, Colombia is planning to become a living, breathing entity as well with their new Bogota Metro. While construction on the new metro only began in 2020, plans for the project began all the way back in the 1950s. Plans were being drafted until a military coup threw a wrench in the works, and the city opted for a bus-based public transit system. Cut to the 1980s, and the Colombian government, along with civil engineers, were looking at building five metro lines that would have cost about $800 million. But another military coup on top of a volcanic eruption derailed those plans. So needless to say, the country has been through a lot in its day, but that didn't stop anyone from moving forward with the Bogota Metro. Even so, the prospect of the new Metro Mega Project was used primarily as a political tool to gain votes over the years, until a budget was finally drafted in 2008 and a final agreement was made in 2013. Fast forward a bit and it wasn't until 2020 when orders were finally placed for the trains themselves and multiple firms entered the picture to help excavate the tunnels. In the end, the Mega Project is on track to cost well over $5 billion dollars but the people of Bogota are long overdue for a proper, well-oiled metro system. Number 10. Metro de Quito Bogota isn't the only South American city hoping for an underground. The Metro de Quito is a megaproject set to build a metro line within the capital of Ecuador, Quito. The megaproject has been sponsored by the government of Ecuador itself, and construction began at the tail end of the year 2012, when both the north and south stations were erected. The construction of the metro line itself began four years later in 2016. As of today, there are a total of 15 finished stations built that extend from the southern tip of the city to the north end. So now, the government has entered phase two of construction, which is where the real fun begins. Next on their agenda is tunneling, boring through the bedrock of the city to create a vast system that will open Quito to everyone. From there, the tracks need to be laid, maintenance depots built, elevator shafts, and the advanced procurement of rolling stock. They've stated that two massive boring machines will be used to see the mega project through. As you would expect, a project of this scale is going to cost a lot, with Phase 2 alone costing $1.5 billion. So despite the machines being used to dig the tunnels, this project is anything but boring. Number 9. 50 Megawatt Molino de Rosas Renewable energy is the next big thing, with just about every developed country entering the industry in hopes of leading the way to a cleaner, better, and more livable world. And one of those countries is none other than Uruguay, which in the summer of 2015 opted for a massive onshore wind farm from the Brazilian Alubar Energia. Uruguay's utility system is state-run, and they're in talks for a power purchase agreement for a big 50-megawatt wind farm in the country's Maldonado region. As with so many state-run operations, there were a few road bumps and hiccups. But should everything go according to plan, the wind farm will help bring clean energy to millions as it operates for the next 20 years. Actually, about 15 to 20 percent of the country. Uruguay has several mega-projects in the works, all of which involve sustainability and conservation efforts. But the 50-megawatt Molina de Rosas project seems to be the biggest. But just how big is it? Try about $3 billion which in the long scheme of things seems like a very small price to pay to keep the planet alive for just that much longer. Number 8. Cartagena Port Expansion The Cartagena Port in Colombia is pretty big in its own right and sees thousands upon thousands of ships making their way in and out each year, bringing in all sorts of goods to help keep the country's GDP up to snuff. But there's always room for improvement, right? Which is why a mega project is underway to make it bigger, better, and more accessible for the ships coming through. The Cartagena port expansion was approved in 2021, and while it will take a few years for the project to be completed, its goal is to triple the capacity of the port and begin operations in the first fiscal quarter of 2021. As it stands now, the current access channel of the port of Cartagena is about 460 feet wide and about 50 feet deep, but when all is said and done, those numbers will be amped up by quite a bit, making the port over 600 feet wide and about 67 feet deep. That means more boats, bigger boats, and more big boats. The initial investment to get the project up and running is about 42 million bucks, but as we've seen with the best laid plans of mice and men, that number is going to go up as construction begins and time moves forward. 
While it is a major area of commerce, the Cartagena port is also home to about a million residents, and since the new mega project will create about 1,200 new jobs, it hopes to employ the locals to keep the economy of the city booming. Hopefully, a little extra cash in their pocket will make up for the loud construction. But when all is said and done, the project will require over 350,000 square feet of concrete to be poured and another 170 tons of cement laid. Number 7. Deep Water Port on Roca Coast If a country wants to boost the GDP and see the economy skyrocket, then it's gonna need some really great port cities. But Colombia isn't the only country looking to expand in that area. Uruguay has opted for a $1 billion plan to grant their South American cousins in Bolivia access to their deep water port of Roca. And this one goes back a bit, when the Uruguayan president made an offer to provide landlocked Bolivia an opportunity to set sail on the Atlantic Ocean in 2013. But building a port from scratch is no easy task, which is why both countries have recruited their best and brightest civil engineers to join forces and draft the plans to build the port on Roca. And while something as seemingly basic as a port may seem trivial to many, it's been an incredibly politically charged issue for Bolivia ever since the country lost its coastal territory to Chile in the 1800s during the War of the Pacific. So while that may have occurred nearly 200 years ago, the pains of the loss have affected the entire country's growth since then. The deep water port on Roca will be able to handle plenty of big and bulky cargo, and while it will remain a public port, it will be fully operated and funded by the private sector for 30 years after its completion. Speaking of funding, how much will something like this cost, do you think? Well, the project's proposed budget so far is $50 million, but will undoubtedly rise to meet things like inflation and added costs of materials. Nothing's ever cheap. Number 6. Southern Peruvian Pipelines Laying down a pipeline is an impressive feat of engineering and infrastructure, and Peru proved they were up to the task when they began work on their southern pipeline systems. This system's natural gas pipeline starts from Peru's Malvinas plant and moves to the connection point and then up to the Chinquintirca plant, moving across 250 miles from point to point. And while they may not sound so impressive to all the engineering nerds out there, it's important to know that much of the southern Peruvian pipelines reach 1,600 feet above sea level at their highest point and wind and weave their way through some of Peru's toughest and hardest to reach mountains. The construction teams need to move both themselves and their heavy equipment incredibly carefully, risking life and limb for the sake of the pipeline. So saying this was a tough mega project is an understatement process was such a big deal for Peru that even priests came to bless the equipment on the day they broke ground, reciting prayers and even sprinkling the machinery with holy water. But when you have a mega project on this scale, you can bet that it's going to cost an insane amount of money, and the southern Peruvian pipelines were no exception. The entire project cost nearly $3 billion to build, much of it done by private contractors, but the amount of money it will bring into the country for years to come is enough to justify such a high price tag. Number 5. Andes Renewable Chile has had issues with energy consumption in the past, but the next mega project on this list is really hoping to change that. Andes Renewable is a massive mega project set to overhaul the country's energy sector by building seven wind farms and three photovoltaic solar farms across the region. The project's been undertaken by the mainstream renewable power, and it's already on track to be one of the largest green energy initiatives of its kind in Latin America. It's said that the entire Andes Renewable Project will cost just south of $2 billion, but promises to deliver 1.3 gigawatts of clean power, which is more than enough to meet the energy demands of about 20% of Chilean households, which is about 4 million people. The project began just a few years ago with the goal of being up and running by the year 2022. But when the world came to a halt after the mandated lockdowns, so too, unfortunately, did the Andes Renewable Project. But that doesn't mean all is lost, because this was just a slight bump on the road for the amazing mega project, and Chile is still holding to its carbon neutrality target date of 2050. It's definitely an initiative that people across the world can be jealous of and even try to compete with. Number 4. Puerto de Gran Escala Since the last entry on our list took us to the beautiful country of Chile, why not stay there for just a while longer? The country is home to another mega project led by the Chilean government, known as the Puerto de Gran Escala, which translates roughly to large scale port. And if you haven't guessed it already, this mega project is all upscaling their port infrastructure and bringing it to the next level. 
The new massive port will be located in San Antonio and, once completed, will be able to handle about eight container ships at a time, all with a maximum length of up to 1,300 feet, allowing for a whopping six million containers at a time, which is three times the capacity of what Chile has now. It's an enormous undertaking, but the benefits will be felt by generations to come, and so this mega project is far more important than many can understand. As time goes on and industries like e-commerce are on the rise, we're seeing just how important freight shipping really is. And so the Puerto de Gran Escala will really put Chile on the map and allow it to enter the modern realm of major players in the world of shipping. And something of this scale won't be completed until at least 2030, and has already run up a bill of $11 billion. The new port's location of San Antonio is already home to about 90,000 people, and because it sits just outside of the nation's capital, it's one of Chile's biggest economic hubs. So just imagine how much bigger the city will become once the Puerto de Gran Escala is complete. Number 3. Bahia's Porto Sul Alright, it's time to move things back over to Brazil. Porto Sul is another Brazilian mega-project that, when completed, will add a deep-water port to the city of Bahia. Bahia is known for being a magnificent tropical region, with plenty of mangroves, lagoons, palm trees, and fishing to be had. It's a vast and gorgeous ecosystem, so the prospect of building a $1.5 billion complex here has many of the locals enraged. And while that is to be expected, the Porto Sul has the potential to be Brazil's biggest and best-looking port complex. But the reason behind the much sought after location is the fact that it's situated near the iron mines, which were only discovered in 2006. So needless to say, when governments found out about the iron, they all wanted a piece of the action. So as a part of the mega project, not only will they build the deep water port, but railway lines with the help of the Chinese government to keep the supply flowing at all times. So you could say that the construction of Bahia's Porto Sul is a bit of a mixed bag. So much so that the project was proposed over a decade ago and has run into more than one roadblock since that time. Some argue that the project will bring much-needed jobs to the area, which sounds great on paper, but on the other hand, it will ruin so much of the beautiful landscape, which both locals and visitors alike enjoy. Number 2. Port of Rio de Janeiro it would seem that when it comes to South American mega-projects, all roads lead back to Brazilian ports. The port of Rio de Janeiro sees a ton of action and is the third busiest port in the country. It's also absolutely massive, sitting on nearly 2,500 acres of land. The history of the port of Rio de Janeiro begins back in the 1870s, when multiple berths were built for trading vessels, with construction lasting for decades as more and more components were added to keep up with both demand and volume. The port officially opened in 1910 has become somewhat of a landmark ever since. On any given day, the port will see shipments of materials like rubber and petrochemicals, consumables like wheat and coffee, and even electronics and vehicle parts come through here. If Brazil needs it, chances are they can get it from the port of Rio de Janeiro. But something like this comes at a serious cost, and while it may be up and running, there is still plenty of maintenance to be done and additions to be made. So all in all, and adjusted for inflation, the cost of this centuries-old mega-project for Brazil is about $36 billion. Number 1. Bogotá Urban Renewal Colombia's capital city of Bogotá has developed quite a negative reputation for itself over the years. Cities known for incredibly high levels of crime and violence, but the government is looking to change those views with their biggest mega-project yet, the Bogota Urban Renewal Project. And while there have been several attempts at an urban renewal process, this one that's currently underway will hopefully rival the likes of Dubai and Singapore. In order to change the perception of Bogota, we can look forward to about 60 new skyscrapers, 500 high-rise buildings, their new subway system, and a new smart city near the locality of Usaken. It's an incredibly ambitious project that's been in talk since 1999, with the hopes of bringing in new industries, businesses, and of course, tourism, to bring the local economy into a new era. And as you would expect, something on this grand of scale comes at a serious price tag of about $50 billion. And that's just the estimate. Something like this requires a major overhaul that runs far deeper than infrastructure. And with plenty of other cities like this popping up around the world, some being more successful than others, it's quite within the realm of possibility no matter how hard it is to get mega projects off the ground. Thank you to our channel members.